much more uh, yo, consistent yo. timbre. Whoop. Okay, Check. I'm gonna, turn, I'm, gonna turn, I'm gonna turn you up to like 46. 46, bye bye. 40, I always have the cloud lifter on the guest for some reason. I mean, you've got excellent mic control. You've recorded a million songs before, but I always just somehow tend to have the cloud lifter on the guest. I don't know why, and today I didn't. What's a cloud lifter? It sounds oh, it's, cool. Um, Is it like a little preamp thing? It's, yeah. It's a mm. little box that goes between the cable and the pre, and it just gives you 45 dB of clean gain. Not bad. For dynamic mics like right. this that need a lot of gain. So, um, yeah, someone mentioned it to me. They're like, why aren't you using that? And I'm like, I didn't even know it was a thing. <laughs> okay. And that's probably, um, is it like a big kind of podcasty type life hack? I think so. That's yeah. like, the more I looked into it, it was like everyone that owns Mark this Maron's mic got was using them. one. Yeah, yeah. Or like an amazing Neve Pre that has 85 dB of gain right out of the gate. Sure. Which I don't have. <laughs> we, can, we can't all afford Neve stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Vintage. In a, in a perfect Neve world. Stuff. Yeah. That would um, that'd be nice. Yeah. So, yeah, back to the fatso. Now that. Um, now that things are looking a little bit better, let me close this. So it's I wonder if, if they're going to have to eventually change the name. With all the political correctness <laughs> that's happening nowadays. <laughs> yeah, what are they going to call? What do you? Yeah, it's like, fuck. Thick. They just, they'll change it to thick. Thicko. With two Cs. Thicko. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> then it's at least body positive. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. So, yeah, that or like, I don't know, man. Like, I... Uh, Audioscape stuff is really good. I have their SSL. This this is their SSL G Comp. Like it's an emulation of the SSL bus compressor. Okay, that's on the center channel it's, of all it's SSL a, it's consoles. A, it's a very attractive, basic white looking thing. Yeah, SSL also released like a, a rack version of their bus compressor, and this mm. is like uh, Audioscape's um emulation of it but it, i mean it sounds phenomenal i love it and their stuff's like a fifth of the price of all the stuff that they're cloning yeah like they have an la2a that's a grand and a ton of people swear it's as good as the original so have you worked with any of the radio like 500 series stuff um no but that's something i want to get into as well the 500 series stuff mm -hmm. my yeah. friend jay works at radial and He's always kind of telling me about the, the radio gear and the 500 vibe might be good for me for like my home studio. Yeah. It's just like all you these can... tiny little, little buddies in a lunchbox. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah, you get the 10 unit, the 10 you space. You go three, five and 10, I think. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, God, I mean, a little bit of everything right there. And... and I don't want too many options. I've already got enough plug-in addictions that yeah. i'm like okay yeah like with outboard gear i'd like i just want i want a, a good preamp a good compressor a good eq yeah. Yeah. really that's it yeah that's and, kind of yeah. Uh, yeah like a good di a hundred percent just get your your fundamentals covered right yeah because i'm sending shit like it i i don't think i'm ever going to truly be a mixer hmm. um i'm now getting stuff to a point where what I send to a mixer, it's very obvious what I'm going for and where it's going to kind of land and end up. Um, whereas it used to feel when I'd go into the studio for like a solo thing, I'd be like, okay, I guess we're flipping a coin to see mm. if this mix is going to be good or not. Mm. Like um, now it's like, I get, I can kind of get it 80 to 90% there. And then it's just that extra 10% of like running it through dope gear having a brilliant EQ, like, brain. Yeah, you know? and, like, God, really good use of mix bus compression, which All is, that stuff, which it's, you know. I, I just don't have, I don't have the time to, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm so much more of a writer where I'm, yeah. like, I'm just, like, I just want it yeah. to sound good as quick as possible right. and so that there's no speed bumps when I'm working with someone. Mm -hmm. I just want it to be, like, easy and for them to be, like, sounds way better than I thought it was going to sound, mm. you know? Which... I think I'm doing now. So are you... Okay, the stuff that you've shown me, you're mixing that, right? The, the bitch tit stuff? You're mixing bitch that tits. in... Beach tits. Beach tits. <laughs> beach tits. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Beach tits. I'm going to let her, let uh, her know about yeah. that. No, um, so that stuff, I've been making the beats. Yeah. And then I recorded one of her vocals. Um, and then the rest we've been doing at Tugboat with Steve Bays. 
and then he's been mixing it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Steve it's Bays. Steve Bays. I'm a fan of your work. <laughs> Steve Bays yeah. is a he's a talented. It sounds fucking awesome. Talented cat. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but it's it's been really cool. The the beach tit stuff is great because I'm just really enjoying. It's it's cool when you're kind of like like I can write uh, solo stuff all day. Yeah. Every day. It's, yeah. you know, it's like, I, I kind of have my sound, you know, um, but when someone comes to you and is like, Hey, I'm starting this project. It's totally different than anything you've ever done. Can you make some beats that sound like this? Right. And I'm like, Oh, like, this is cool. This is a concrete challenge. That's real. And you know, you send it, she's already got everything written and she's, and she just rocks it out. And it's yeah. like, Okay, cool. This is like a real thing, but um, it's just so nice when someone's giving you these kind of challenges where they're mm -hmm. like, "Can you do mm -hmm. this thing that's out of your comfort zone?" But it's also nice that you. I mean, it sounds like she's giving you a lot of direction, and you've got like maybe references, like she's saying, "I like this type of beat." So yeah, yeah it's, it's a challenge, but at least you can sort of see the finish line where like what you're aiming for. Totally. Rather than punching in the dark it's it's not abstract yeah i mean it, it is in some ways for her because she asks for a thing and then i give her something that's kind of like it but <laughs> totally my vibe <laughs> um but she seems to like my vibe so it's it's cool um a lot of slap bass yeah a lot of a lot of like uh kind of have you ever heard of city pop it was no. like in japan it was like uh, Japanese bands emulating the kind of like yacht rock seventies funk. Okay. At, but in the eighties okay. and it's, it's, it's cool <laughs> shit. Yeah. You should check it out. Yeah. Um, it kind of, that's basically what this, what it sounds like. Yeah. When sure. The beats that I'm making for mm -hmm. her. Um, city pop. If you just type in even city pop playlist on Spotify. Okay. You'll, you'll hear it and you'll be like, Oh Yeah. Yeah. I get it. The Asian it's, that were ten a whole gen, or ten a decade behind doing like <laughs> yeah, and, but it's just so like so much smoother hmm. and like so the melodies are much more like jumping up octaves and mm. kind of all over the place. Very much like how modern like J-pop and K-pop, at least in my opinion, the melodies are super strong and like but a, kind of jazzy. Um, hmm. almost like Mariah Carey ish where it's like lots all of, of octaves, all, lots of <laughs> yeah, octaves yeah, yeah. and like lots of major sevens and those like Christmas chords almost, mm. you know, you know what I mean? Like chestnuts roasting on an open fire, like all these, the people who are listening to this can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm, I'm playing, I'm playing an invisible keyboard and hitting like <laughs> Steely Dan, expensive yeah. Berkeley yeah. jazz school chords. Yeah. Um, okay. So, and how is this, how, how does this, what does that look like when you're producing a song? Like, are you using, uh, obviously some sort of MIDI keyboard, you're playing mm -hmm. live bass yourself or are there, are there drum machines or are you using samples? Yeah. Like, I'm really interested. Okay. Well with, with the beach set stuff with, like the single that's coming out, Calm Before the Storm. I think that's what it's called. Calm the Storm Inside of Me. She, she keeps changing it. Either way, it's sick. Um, but, <laughs> um, okay. Um, I'll start, I'll tend to start with um, a, a loop off Splice. Mm, um, yeah. I just go through and and look look around. I really like... The Oliver stuff for a starting point. There's some cool like Afro pop stuff now that I've been using and chopping up. Um, and then I'll just kind of like build, um, what's it called? A uh, track stack. Are you familiar with track stacking on Logic? Uh, when you're like comping vocals almost, right? Is sure. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's actually amazing. It, I just learned this like a year ago. Um, but basically like, so it's like drum track. So I'll have my drum loop and then I'll have like two kicks that I've tucked under it to make it bigger and then a snare yeah. and then any extra percussion. And then you highlight all the all the things and then you click uh, right click on it and go create track stack. And then you can just immediately bus everything to 
all those tracks. So you're using like oh, less less shit, and then it also mm. goes, and then you're just looking at one thing for all the drums. Yeah, which is really nice if you're like writing. You yeah, know? less uh, space on your screen. Yeah, right? and so I'll like to think. EQ each thing, and then like limit the bus, compress the bus, add a little bit of like saturation, and then I'm usually good. And that's mm -hmm. like my drum for the for the writing. Okay. And then I'll do a funky ass bass line. Yeah. <laughs> and then I have like I have the tiniest. The next thing I really need to get is like a bigger MIDI keyboard. Mm. Mine is it looks basically like an OP one, one of those like, you know, those tiny little teenage engineering I think we have things. One in here under this. They're super yeah. sick, yeah. but they're so small, yeah. and it's like, it's very. Annoying. It's a backpack. It's keyboard. annoying <laughs> to play. Yeah. <laughs> um. And so so yeah. Then I'll then I'll do that and just play around. I've been really liking the. CMIV, which is like a fair light emulator. Mm. It was the weird like keyboard that it was this giant white keyboard with this computer screen and a mic attached to it. Okay. Kate Bush used it a lot. Peter Gabriel used it a lot. I think mm. Prince was rocking it, but mainly Kate Bush um, is probably the most famous, but it's just got all these kind of cool pads mm. and like weird, you know, those. Um, the like orchestra hits in Owner of a Lonely Heart by Yes. Yeah, okay. That's okay. that's the oh, the, cool. the fair light. Doo, 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 doo. Like that shit. Oh, yeah. sweet. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm and like Sledgehammer. Yeah. All that stuff. Um and it's free for 30 days if if you want to try it. Check it out. <laughs> Sick. Okay, so that 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 gives me a pretty good idea of like Mm -hmm. of how you're laying down the sounds and stuff and then like you, you you're also doing like you said like sort of a rough mix before it's sent to your friend right oh, yeah i'm getting yeah. it as close as i possibly can yeah um and also just doing that because i'm trying to get better mm -hmm. and you know 100%. you, you yeah. learn something new every single time you try to get something as close as possible sometimes you just learn that you're an idiot and and that you're blown out. after those car checks <laughs> you're <laughs> those, like oh che no. those car checks god those are <laughs> heart-wrenching but yeah i mean constantly it, it it's the language at the end of the day so like you said even if you're not aiming to be a mixer one day the more that you know these techniques and tools the better you can communicate with exactly the mixer the master or the whoever right like mm -hmm. this all this this studio world the studio etiquette comes with a language that you know, it's so important to know. Big time. Like, also, it'll save you a lot of money and stress yeah. and like pulling your hair out in the long run. So, yeah. I mean, I'm definitely, it's one of those things where like, I think I had absorbed way more than I realized. Mm. But I remember even, I mean, God, like five years ago, I was like, I didn't even know how to use Logic. Like I wasn't even recording anything because I was like, I don't have an engineer mind. Mm -hmm. This is like, it's, I'll never be able to do that. Mm. And then I started doing it and I was like, Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> like it, th this is clearly going to be a never ending, you know, journey mm -hmm. of learning, yeah. but like anybody can do it. It's, it's just, it takes a lot of work to, to learn all the kind of nooks and crannies oh of the world, you yeah. know? Yeah. It but, really does. But it's like to get to that first 30% where you're like, hey, I just made a demo. It's like, no, no, no. Anybody can do that. And it's and that's great. That's yeah. a very yeah. freeing thing. I yeah. was like, oh, cool. Like this changes my whole world. I was paying people to record my demos. Fuck. I know. I'm glad you brought that up, actually, because that brings me to something that I wanted to talk to you about is like how far DAWs, digital audio workstations and presets and all these things that help mm. bedroom artists sound half decent. How far that shit's come since yeah. like I first had my MacBook. I bet. You know you've what been, I mean? You've, like, you've been at it how many years now? 17 years. 17 I, years. Since I first like picked up a mic and made songs. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, I was around 13 or so, but I mean, God, we were using like a cracked version of uh, Fruit Loops or yeah, something. Yeah, I don't even know. Like, I don't even know. My cousin was the engineer back then. <laughs> nice. It like, it's always someone's <laughs> cousin or older brother. <laughs> you know what I mean? And and I'm hearing some of these demos that the, the kids that I'm recording and mixing are coming to me with. 
um, today and it's blowing my fucking hair mm. back. It's like, it's like a little bit scary that I'm like, what is going on here? And I like, I, and then I'll, of course, like I'm always trying to learn, I'm, I'm trying to get better. So I'll like, we'll have a conversation about it. And it's like, Hey, like, one, uh, this is after I found out they did it themselves, by the way. Because right. at first I'm like, hey, this sounds great. Like, where'd you do it? And the, yeah. the, the kid yesterday was like, garage band. I'm like, in my bedroom. Wow. Like, straight up. This kid's 18 years old, right? And um, and I'm just like, okay. Like, trying to compose myself. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's like, you know, uh, how did you do those harmonies? Like, you know, and he's explaining to me like how he EQ'd the harmonies with his hand because he doesn't know what frequency it was. He's just like, yeah, I usually put it like here if for people that can't see. I'm like just holding my arm out at an angle. Just, just doing, like, just like cutting off yeah, half just like of everything. Some, like, like just winging it, right? Right. And I'm like, your reverbs sound great. Like what, what plugins are you using? And it's just, it's just all stock stuff. Just basic stock mm-hmm. presets right out of the gate with absolutely zero understanding of anything to do with gain staging engineering compression eq right. uh, what how much headroom are you leaving on your mix bus before you send it to mastering what's a mix bus what's a headroom what's yeah. a what's a headroom like, i'm not i'm <laughs> no, not even making I, this I up i didn't know, you know what headroom was until like two weeks ago so so, <laughs> <laughs> so um and this has happened more than once now where i'm like mm. Good lord, um, that that's a beautiful thing. It it is a beautiful thing, um, but it's also like I got to step my game up because if people are going to mm. continue paying me for mixing, right. I got to be way better than that. Sure, and that's yeah. already pretty damn good. So yeah, that's that's the dilemma that There's I'm facing right now. <laughs> one one thing that's always really freaked freaked me out in a good way is like when I'm working with a vocalist who is just so good. Mm. Where it's like, you just record it, and <laughs> and it's suddenly the music, the little flaws in the music don't matter as much. It's just about that vocal performance, and it's easy. And it was two takes, and I'm just comping mm, it, and it's like beautiful. It's like, oh, okay, that's that's a good, that's a that's a that's a nice, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, 100%. that's that's a cool, that's a cool feeling, that's a cool thing, yeah. Um, and that's at the end of the day, that's like. That's your that's your story, you know. Mm. If if you're doing lyrical stuff, um, but yeah. Whereas with me, like when I record vocals, it's like fifty takes. I'm like comping <laughs> yeah. every single yeah. thing. I'm you know tuning slightly, like I'm taking a scalpel to it, because mm-hmm. um, I'm not the world's best singer. It turns out mm. I'm I'm uh, I get by. I, I've got my own my own vibe. Yeah. You know what I mean. But also, I think if you're engineering yourself, you have that luxury of being really anal and particular, sure. and spending forty hours. Because I mean, there I do I well. do do that here when people are paying me, and it drives me nuts. And I'm thinking to myself, why the fuck didn't they just practice at home before they right. came here? But if yeah. you're if you're practicing at home, for sure, do fifty takes, comp every little word. You exactly. Know what I mean? Yeah. So. um because some people, some people will be totally ignorant of that when they come record and not consider like that maybe that's not fun for the engineer. And sure. then there's some people and that... also maybe they're not going to get their best work that way. Yeah, because there is something about there's a lot to be said about not reading lyrics off your phone oh, and God. like performing it because you know the story in your head, you know what's happening, and obviously not everyone is is gets to do that because you're recording it as you're writing it etc cetera, etc cetera. um but that's the shit like that's i in my opinion that's how you get your best vocal take you hear those stories man even like beyonce eminem like top top artists in the world are like bar by bar sometimes i've heard stories of eminem right. doing like it, he's just so good that you can't hear him punching in but he's like recording bar by bar because he's so particular him and dr dre are in there for right. like days at a time with the door closed oh, that's you know so i'm sure it happens but um, it takes... And with sorry to interrupt no, with, okay. with with rap, it there must also be like breath control. I remember the first time I saw Kanye, he was like performing on Much Music or something. He, he was doing Jesus Walks, and 
his breathing was so loud, like in between, <laughs> in bet- because it was so like he. I don't even understand how he was able to breathe, like how mm. he didn't pass out. Yeah. Um, is are we talking about him performing in this live? Yeah, yeah it was a live okay. thing. Yeah. Sorry, it was yeah. a live thing. But I imagine in the studio there might be some magic in that keeping your power by like doing four bars at a time and then Mm -hmm. and punching every single time because you're hitting it with like this oh for sure you know the initial burst of energy each time everybody punches in like i don't i mean maybe uh i'll say his name because this is a big compliment but a guy named ray gamma that i worked with he'll do like a full 16 in one take i've seen him do that but that's so rare that um so nowadays that is incredibly rare the beach tits (laughs) thing that you heard that was one take that was the first take we did and that was it that was the first time i i had ever even heard her rap incredible which is cool yeah I mean, you should be able to do that. And and I remind all the artists that I work with, it's like, hey, look, one day you're going to have to perform this on stage. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you're, you've got to rehearse this. You've got to rehearse this in a take. It's okay if we do it in takes sure. in the booth, but be able to do it in a take. Yeah. You know, um, that's I, so important. My God. I, I suppose that's kind of where like hype men came, came in and like even having a DJ that would be like, kind of closing some, some of your, some, or, or closing or closing your verses, like, like doubling you yeah, so that you could bar. take a breath while they hit it. That's an like, art form. You're absolutely right with, about that. I mean, yeah. Um, because. Because it's impossible. It's impossible. To, to not like, especially if you're running around. Bouncing live, around on stage. Yeah. yeah. Waving your arms at the audience. Yeah. My God. Um, breathing is the, like when it comes to hip hop, breathing is the most important thing with i mean i'm sure it is with singing and or and, you know any yeah. type of vocal performance but too many of the rappers that i work with um they don't consider breathing or there's there right. isn't even like gaps in the verse where it's like the audience has to be able to like keep up with you there's you gotta right. have, you gotta stop sometimes you can't just like go 10 all the way and then yeah, into the you'll... chorus it's 10 there, yeah, ear fatigue is a real ear thing. Ear fatigue. Leave some gaps. Breathe. You know, slow it down a bit. Um, Jay Z, in my opinion, is the greatest MC of all time. Mm-hmm. I never heard him breathe once. Like I've mm. listened to every album of his. I've never heard him take a breath. Um, it's because there's so little effort in what he's doing. Right. Because he's composed his verses in a way where it's there's a, gaps. He's yeah. so good at leaving gaps because he's not overexerting himself so you don't hear the <gasps> yeah in, yeah in which between, was that kanye performance right? i was like oh my god that's yeah. right you have to breathe <laughs> while you're doing this stuff um yeah but he was killing it it was sick but i was just like oh right okay yeah, yeah like that's 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 a thing it really is um yeah it's so cool it just got really loud downstairs yeah, it got, it got i loud. think the door, opened good, in, but... the door opened in studio a oh, nice. yeah yeah <laughs> um let me know if it gets too hot in here we can crack the window but or the Thus door far it's it... it's it's very it feels okay. very reasonable okay that's good what yeah, if, the... how how are you gonna do your 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 air how does that work you just cut a cut a hole in the roof uh, yeah i'm not sure yet but <laughs> <laughs> the, <clears throat> the the whole building has an a ventilation system we have like those big ducts yeah yeah ducts. that always look kind of ghetto but it's a warehouse that's before I, this I was a studio this is technically a warehouse it's got yeah. that big warehouse door at the front so it's industrial looking right? but when i was walking over here in the rain it oh just it, <laughs> vancouver has begun again <laughs> good <laughs> lord um but <clears throat> it's there's so many cool little restaurants and like little cafes and mm-hmm. it's it's a pretty nice zone i actually bike by here all the time but oh, yeah. on uh Adenac. Okay. Yeah, the, um, the bike path. I didn't realize yeah. it was here. For yeah. some reason, I thought you. I thought two track was. Did you used to be somewhere else? Was it? Was I? I always imagined you cats being like, you know, if you go west of Maine, seventh, like below Broadway. There's kind of like Boompa was there, Time and Works, all these like little studios are there. Yeah, that's where uh, Garth Richardson's old studio was fader mountain yes and there's, um, kind I think of that in may, that hood there's a I place thought... called hipposonic around yeah, there now yeah, yeah. um 
so yeah and there's a handful of uh you know post-production voiceover film mm -hmm. studios in mm -hmm. that neighborhood as well yeah i thought you guys were there for some reason this nope. is cool you're like in my hood it's been oh cool yeah i'm, I'm in realize the zone. that yeah mm -hmm. no this has been this is where this has been since day one um how um how did how did the mastering go on on that uh commercial thing yeah pretty good i didn't do too much to it uh, as as you know the mastering approach calls for um but i thought it sounded awesome um i'll show you what i did you know we can yeah, yeah. we can dive into it a little bit after and you can tell me if you like mine better i'm um, always curious <laughs> i mean i i probably will <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no, a little bit of mid-side eq you know cool. a little bit of saturation bit of you know multi-band compression L yeah a little bit of each um was, i thought it sounded that's, a little tighter you that's know, what i was hoping wider, mine was kind of peak and peak and valley ish there was like there was just some frequencies that were kind of bugging me there was i as for the listeners i was working on a kind of an advertising gig um for this kind of oceany type thing and it's, I mean, how would you, it's like kind of abstract, ethereal, I don't know. It sounds Wait. like the ocean. It sounds like waves, even though there are no waves in it. It's very, nice. okay. like I saw the beach. You, okay, you, yeah, you like, you're like. I don't know how to describe that in sounds, but it's those washy pianos and the synth yeah. and. Okay, cool. Yeah. 100%. But, but yeah, I like for me, mastering is I just put Ozone 9 on it and call it a day pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> so like. Yeah. It's not quite the same. Yeah, those are great. I've seen some tutorials on 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 the ozone stuff, and they've got ridiculous presets where you can like, with one fader, you can like bring out the vocals in a mix, or like bring out the bass in a mix, like according to its algorithm. Like, it's it's true. <laughs> um, seeing like watching what Steve does with Ozone Nine is it's like. Oh, okay, cool. You know, <laughs> where he's he's using there's like um a spectral shaper where you can be carving out frequencies and like yeah. kind of compressing exact frequencies like multiband but even more like surgical. Sure. Yeah. Um I just I don't I I got to take baby steps towards <laughs> that that type of thinking or else I just get I get, I just feel like I'm going to drown. Yeah. You know? Yeah, man. I hear you. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't by any stretch of the imagination consider myself a mastering engineer, although people hit me up on the regular to mm. master their stuff. And mm. I don't say no, you know, because I feel like if I, you know, if I can help them get a better sound than what they're doing in their bedroom or what Lander's going to do for them or whatever, like, Great, you know, and I'll help out, but I'm definitely... What's, what's Lander? Oh, Lander is... Is um, that like an online mastering yeah. service? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've used it a bunch in the past. Uh, I had a subscription to it for a couple of years and it's really good. I mean, it's it's like, it will it just finishes your song for you. It makes it loud. Probably kind of in a know. similar way to Ozone 9, yeah. I'm guessing. Yeah. It used to just be uh, like three settings, medium or soft, medium and loud. Soft would be for like jazz Mm -hmm. medium and then loud you know for like pop and hip-hop yeah um, but now they've got three other parameters but it's literally upload your wave file and we'll do the rest right and it's you know i've yet to get a bad result from it but it's still like that's not going to replace you know like a manly massive passive eq and like a, mm -hmm. an amazing room and a really good mastering engineer you know yeah like, and 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 a, <laughs> a, a customized master done by a human who's like paying attention totally not just an algorithm totally yeah but it is nice to be able to just immediately have a demo compete with the loudness of uh something that maybe a, someone at a record label i don't know I, I i used to think that everyone in the music industry knew everything that i knew and a lot of them don't, and I think a lot of people are just kind of looking for that initial like buzz from a song mm. when they're like listening to demos, mm. figuring out what's going to get cut, all right. that kind of stuff. And so your 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 demo needs to be at least as you know 
it needs to be ballpark. It's got to have that for loudness, yeah. and then also for like harshness, for EQ, for all the things. Just like it needs to sound good because I don't know if if everyone really understands how to listen for a good song, how to listen kind of through a bad mix and find the song. Sure. Um, mm. in, in in at a record label, especially in the states. And that's not that's not a slam. Yeah. I think that's just kind of like something that every artist needs to be thinking about. Yeah, you have mm. to because there's those guys are you know playing how many songs a day. They're not and and you got to imagine they're in their wherever listening room, car, whatever it is, but they're not sitting there touching the volume knob, right? So they're going song to song to song. Right. And if, yeah. And they're like loud, loud, loud. And if yours comes on it's just human nature to think that louder is better and impact, right? So it's like true. if yours is six dB quieter and you don't have, you know, good parallel compression and thickness going on, you yeah. don't have that dense mix. It's just, it's just lost. And they're not going to, and they're not going to be like, oh, turn this up. Let me critically listen to this yeah. and hear this maybe, song. Well, maybe it's there's just... a good lyric in this second verse. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to give it another minute. Like it, it's, I hate to say it, but they're, they just don't. Yeah. And, and so it's like, yeah, you really got to, really make sure you're putting your best foot forward um that's definitely something i've learned in the past few years so you've you've been you've been like shopping your demos to labels right well i was yeah um in la and then and then i i i did get signed um and we we released some stuff together um but like um just the yeah it it was just it's just crazy like just kind of what you figure out. And I was lucky enough to be working with a lot of sick producers. Um, and the producers who were better at mixing, even if it wasn't as good of a song as maybe some of these other ones, mm. those are the songs that the label wanted to cut. Interesting. You know what I mean? Mm. It's like, that's something you noticed, Hey, Oh yeah. That's huge. That's all huge. around, all around. Wow. Mm-hmm. With like with everyone, yeah. So like the sonics, it's 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 not the thing. melodies and the lyrics, but just well, like the impact. The yeah, but but that's that's not to say that like the other things aren't important. Mm -hmm. I think all of the songs that I was writing, um, not not to like to my own horn, but they were they were all really good songs. Yeah. and but it was the ones that were sonically felt huge. Yeah, you know that. Even if it wasn't as good of a song, um, I think I think people would get much more excited about it much more quickly. And so, how are these other artists going about that? Like, they just have a. a what do you What do you mean? The artists who are ha who you oh, have like the, the better mixers and the producers that are putting out these like competitive sonic songs, like. How are they? Di is it a bit? They have a bigger budget to work with different people. Like, how, where, how does that fit into the well, equation? Like, I know, like, it's funny because when I first started um, doing a lot of co-writes, I had refused LA and I was I was doing Nashville because I'd heard that it was more song oriented, mm. which it is. Mm -hmm. um, anywhere you go, you're it's if you, if you're a good producer, you're gonna get more work because. Yeah that's it's just kind of obvious that that would be a thing but like um in in nashville it was like okay we'd write a song out um and then i'd come back to vancouver and then i'd cut it myself in, a, in an actual studio mm, okay. with like with a band okay cool yeah um but then i started going down to la and with like with nashville you can pretty much get into a room with anyone if if you've done your research and and you've got a good vibe. Mm. Um, and you, pr it seemed like I always got one shot with them. Um, and then if, if they don't like you or whatever, then you don't work with them again, or if it's just not jiving, but like, I pretty much kept working with everyone that was there and like that I, that I worked with. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was virtually unknown down there. Yeah. So like if, if you just reach out, it's, it's definitely like, I feel like it's an open door policy there. In LA, it's much more like D circle, C circle, B, and like A list circle. And it's like mm. to get an A lister is impossible unless 
your dad knows someone or her, <laughs> if you're unknown yeah, yeah. Um, or, or like something totally random happens or, or you, you get signed or whatever. Sure. Um, but yeah, I think I don't really understand your question. Um, maybe, I'm, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, that kind of actually answered what I was asking. Okay. Honestly. Okay. Yeah. I mean, um, cause I'm always trying to, I'm, I'm always considering that, right? Like when I'm working f for people like this, what I'm putting out has to, regardless of if it's a good song or not, like this, produ this engineering has to sound competitive to everything else that's out. You right. know what I mean? Um, especially when it's put on a streaming platform and, you know, someone's just going through a playlist and they're not actively changing the volume. There's just one song after the next and yours comes on next. Yeah. It's got to hold up. And you're losing resolution and like yeah. all those things too, which kind of sucks, but I guess that's, that's just a thing. That's a thing. Um, and the that's new, the new Amazon thing supposed to be high, high res. Oh, they've got a like Amazon uh, Music. They're like, just of starting course it. they've got an, of course. <laughs> yeah, what, you think they're not gonna get a get a piece of that? They're gonna that get action? It on the action. My God. Um, but Neil Young has touted it as this, like, because you know he was trying to set up that streaming service himself for a while. Yeah, I heard about that. And now I think he's partnered with Amazon, and so okay. they're kind of using his what he considers like the I don't know what you'd call it. I, the resolution, the whatever, mm. um, which might be cool. Yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah. The, that way people can, you know, hear what the artist hears as they say, you know, um, on, on their, on their tiny Bluetooth $20 <laughs> speaker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, just, it's the wild west out there right now, man. Like I'm just, I'm still trying to figure it out because it, the, the minute that I thought I was getting close to figuring it out, figuring what out, uh, like, mastering and loudness and stuff okay, on, yeah, on streaming yeah. platforms the whole rabbit hole just got bigger you know what right. I mean? when i got to the point where the stuff that i was that i'm doing here in this room that we're sitting and i'd play something that i'm mixing and mastering for someone and then i'd play like you know a drake song or sure. a you know insert any artist and i'd be like wow okay like i'm in the ballpark for sure that's mm. this is amazing i've worked so hard to get into this ballpark yeah and then you upload it to Spotify and stuff and they're turning your shit down. Mm. So then it becomes more a question of perceived loudness, not just right. it's like what a, it's the a meters limiting, are telling you. Limiting game. And that's a whole that's like a that is a dark art. Um the whole perceived it's, loudness it's, thing. It, yeah, it's, it's strange. It's, it's like black magic. Yeah. It's it's like it is it is crazy. <laughs> I I'm i I'm just figuring that out now, but it's like the biggest game changer for me has been Using like limiting and compression on every single track mm. for me, the way that I record, which is like I'll have like you know five guitar tracks, a bass track, a bunch of drum tracks, keyboard, et cetera, et cetera. Um, because if I'm just limiting it on the master bus, then I'm kind of like, I'm like, okay, I think this sounds good, and then I bounce it, and then I listen to like a daft punk song, and I'm like. Oh yeah. Fuck. Like yeah. it's just, it's as loud, but like theirs is like right in my face. Yeah. And then mine is like way back here. Yeah. And I'm like, what the hell's going on here? And limiting was a big deal for me. Mm -hmm. Just like, but it's also, it's, it's crazy. Cause like everyone in LA, every single mix that I was getting back for a certain point in time, everyone was smashing the limiting on it oh, really? to the point where I was like, clearly in the red yeah um but that's kind of like this alternative like indie rock radio sound mm. down there mm. and like i was like this <clears throat> doesn't sound good like m I, my ears would be tired within the first 10 seconds of the song oh jesus i'm just like Ugh! like turn it down well and you're losing the dynamics the of fidelity the song yeah to, like all like, the beauty all the nuance yeah yeah if everything's just slammed up against a wall um yeah, limiting is really important. On I always, uh, you know, for years thought like limiter means the end, right? Because mm -hmm. when I was very first getting into engineering school, and I learned like, oh, I can put a limiter on something and like make my mix louder. It gets louder for some reason. Wow, yeah. that was like a game changer for yeah. me, right? Um, and so I thought, okay, that's it. Like 
you put a limiter at the end, you make sure it's just below zero. So like mm. negative 0.1, 0. 0.5 or, or whatever. Or one. Yeah, yeah. And you're good. You know, yeah. <laughs> like, but yeah. it's like, no, 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 no. Like you were saying, man, in stages, control mm. your peaks in stages. Um, the use of saturation has completely opened up like the whole universe for me like mm-hmm. in the last couple of years use because i i never knew what saturation was and now i'm going down the rabbit hole and using it a, a lot more and getting like yeah distortions compression oh my god it's yeah. amazing right controlling peaks getting thickness getting perceived loudness so all these mm-hmm. little stages build up so that you're not your limiter at the end isn't working super hard and pumping yeah. and so, but we've, I mean, God, it's just, it's a million little nuances. Yeah. Like. <laughs> the latest thing that Steve brought up that I've been thinking about a lot is like, I was always pushing things back with reverb. It's like, well, let's just, let's just put a little like spring verb on, on that guitar part and mm. just kind of push it back. Cause it's, it doesn't, it's more textural or whatever. Mm. Um, and he introduced the idea of instead of using reverb, using EQ to push things back, mm. like removing the high end yep. so that it doesn't have this perceived in your face thing. It, it just kind of naturally gets pushed back. And, yeah. and it's, it's really cool because basically for me, I'm like, how do I make it sound like Steely Dan? Like at the end of the day, that's my, <laughs> that's my benchmark. Oh, I'm it? like, okay. how do I make this sound like IGY by Donald Fagan? Yeah. It's just the best mix of all time. We should listen to it okay. after. Before. Yeah. Yeah. I'd love to. Um, but it's like, how do I make it sound like that? And th- there's obviously there's some reverb and there's, they use a, they use <clears throat> a little bit of like chorus and flanging and mm-hmm. things like that on certain things, but pretty much everything's bone dry. Right. And it sounds nuts. Yeah. Like, Huge, right? Like depth and width and... Expensive as fuck. Yeah. Like it's crazy. Yeah. It's amazing. And there's so much going on. It also helps that everything is played perfectly, yeah. perfectly in time. Like there's no... Nothing's nothing's out of phase. Nothing's, right. and nothing's really stepping well recorded on, is... And well thought out. Like there's, yeah. there is all of that. Like yeah. the building blocks of it are, are like are there. flawless. Yeah. <laughs> But still, yeah. Um, I, yeah, I just I was like, how did how do they do that? But I think EQ is a big it's a big deal, and manipulating EQ for like just to make sure nothing's stepping on on toes, and then it's just yeah, being able to push things back with EQ blew my mind. I yeah. Like, oh. Oh that's yeah. Cool. <clears throat> I remember when I, I when I learned that as well, and it was like, um, I, I don't know what the, I think it's brighter things tend to come forward that's like the rule yeah, that's how yeah. it like works on our brain you know what i mean yeah and, um the same thing with like with the release time on a compressor if you want something to sit further back in the mix you put a slow release on it so it's just kind of like ooh, right there's like there's a tail which is almost grabbing it and hanging it's, it's on almost to like it. that reverb mm-hmm. thing where it's yeah it's if 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 you were on mushrooms, you could see it. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. Like, <laughs> you could probably see. I it. can. I'm closing my eyes, and I can, I can see what it would look like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that in in your face vocal or percussive instruments, it's like mm-hmm. you know the release is moving, you right? Know, but it's that's why it's coming up in front. So all these little techniques to create depth without actually using reverb, it's amazing, right? Like it's cool. Um, yeah, I always used to think that there was way more reverb on stuff than there actually was. And the better my ear gets and I go back and I listen to stuff that I was, you know, j- jamming to in my teenage years and I play it and I'm like, I'm having the same reaction as you. I'm like, this is really fucking dry. Like, right. But it still sounds massive. You know, what's going on? Have here? <laughs> you, have you had any moments of, um, revisiting like a song that you were hyped on? six years ago and was like your jam and then you pull it up now and you're like kind of sounds like shit yes <laughs> i i hate it it bummed me out i'm not yes. gonna say the song that it was because it's still a great song but the mix was so bad mm. it sounded like something i did in my jam space like four <laughs> years ago yeah. like i was like what we were bumping this like yeah it was trippy it kind of freaked me out it, it makes you, yeah, it's, it's, uh, 
Sometimes when I hear stuff like that, I question what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm like, why am I trying so hard? If this was like, a, this was like on the radio, this was like a mm. big song. Yeah, that's it's... that's a weird. You almost don't want to think. You just don't want to <laughs> like, think about that. That's a that's a bad rabbit hole to yeah, go down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't go down that. Um, <laughs> doubting yourself and just being like, why? Yeah. So, but I have had that, you know, on more than once for sure. Mm -hmm. It's weird, um, but it's like a. It's a little bit like a, I want to say superpower, but it's like getting an amazing sense of hearing is a, it's another sense, man. I mean, mm -hmm. it's like, I can only imagine someone who's like a professional chef tastes stuff that I don't taste. Like right. their, their palate is just so refined that they're like, they can taste the nuances and like the salt or whatever it is. Totally. Right. But that's how my ears work now that 10 years ago. I know. That wasn't and the case. It's, it's a blessing and a curse <laughs> because I I'm sure every chef to a certain extent, maybe sometimes wishes that they could just like eat a big Mac <laughs> and like, <laughs> and yes. not, not think about it the yeah. way that they did when they were like eight years old. Yeah. But like, I do wish that I could like listen to the radio the way that I used to when oh I was my God. just a little kid and everything just, I was like, it just seemed like these mountains, mm. these like giant mm. songs where I was just, I was like, how do they, I don't yeah. even understand. Yeah. Um, I was just learning bass at the time and I was only thinking about bass, um, let alone, you know, just everything else. It just seemed like this impossible thing. Yeah. Um, and then now I'm like, I have to I have to turn it off sometimes. I, I do my best to to turn it off and to not be a, a critic or to think I've actually become quite quite a bit better at not being critical. Um but I'm still when I when I find something I like, I'm usually picking it apart. Yeah. It's so hard for me. Like it I don't listen to music for pleasure like I used to, like mm -hmm. I used to, I used to just like lie in bed and put an album on, you know what I mean? Right. Close my eyes regularly. Um, now I can't do that. I can't, like I have to, anytime I hear something, even if it's in the background and I'm at the mall and there's like a song mm -hmm. on the speaker in the mall, I'm like, I like that snare, you know yeah, what I mean? Or I know I can hear the, wow, I can hear the, the bass on this little speaker. So loud. Um, it's yeah. It's so tough to turn I, that brain I've got off. a tip for you. Activities. I, when I, I'll paint and put on an album. Okay. And, and it has to be the right album, but like, that's really good for me. Kind of like listening to podcasts while you're driving or like, it's like, yep. if I have an activity that I'm focused on while I'm listening to it, I can usually trick my brain to getting closer to my like boyhood listening right okay brain. distracting that critical thing that's always, oh yeah because because if if yeah if, that's always if, thinking yeah. that I'm, engineer mixer brain that we mm -hmm. have that's always running <laughs> yeah 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 okay i'm gonna try that yeah i mean i don't paint but i'm sure i could you know find something else something. to distract or myself even with, like you know uh i don't know stain your deck <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. Celine would love it. Yeah, <laughs> Celine would love it. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'll give that a go. Mm -hmm. It's uh, yeah. It it kind of works for me. Or you can also, I found, like two bottles of wine will also get you back, back to the boyhood listening. That that's that happened. That does work. That happened. But it's it's yeah. <laughs> it has its it has its its. It's highs and lows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just listening. I did that the other day, and I was listening to like old some old Nas records, and I was just mm. like, "Oh God!" Like I'm not. I'm just listening to the song right now. This is amazing. But that was after like a day of drinking. You know, sure. At the end of but, the night. <laughs> but that's amazing. And then also, that's that's for me. Like that's what Steely. That's that's what Steely Dan and and a lot of these masters, and by masters I mean like like you know gods yes. do yeah experts where where i'm just like i don't need to pick this apart because mm -hmm. if because it would be never ending yeah mm -hmm. you know like that this doesn't even apply to me right now i'm not even close to like mount olympus mm -hmm. you know i'm i'm just like okay i'm just gonna enjoy this yeah well it's almost pointless if there's, there's some stuff that is so good that it just it's like you know 
I don't even know what they're doing, but I might as well just enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you can just no idea what's smash happening. your head against the wall for three hours. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's so funny, but yeah, it's. <clears throat> I don't know. For me personally, like I am trying to, um, I'm trying to become a great mix engineer. That's like, that's my goal. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, I've been doing this like I said, 17 years now <clears throat> in some capacity or the other. And I've done, I've done all of it. I've been the artist. I've been on stage. I've been setting up the mic. I've yeah. mixed, I've mastered, I've done all of it. And that's so important. I and think. I've found that like, this has been a natural progression for me to like really fall in love with mixing and find like, this is a, a beautiful puzzle with sounds that I absolutely love doing it's the most difficult most challenging thing i've ever done in my life but it's mm. so rewarding when i do getting better at it yeah hearing stuff that i'm doing and being like wow i can't believe i did this this is great i'm improving and it's it's and incredibly you really rewarding can measure it oh my god yeah which yeah. which is both scary but also beautiful like mm. we do have critical ears and your ears get more critical as, as you as you learn and it's like it's cool to to compare a new mix to a mix that you did six months ago mm -hmm. and be like, okay, I'm like, and I'm, it's, I'm it's, making some progress here. It is that quick, which is nuts. It's mm -hmm. not like something I did yesterday versus something I did a year ago. I hear a difference for sure, but I'm like, if I don't touch something for a month, I've learned so much in that month right. from like practice mixed with the masters, tutorials, whatever it may be, just listening a lot. I'm like, I got to go back to that. I got to tweak my mix bus. Yeah. I'm like, I hear, I'm hearing this differently. It's like, it's, it's this unbelievably quick progression it's, mm -hmm. and it's never ending. Like I'm just and constantly getting better. It's crazy. Yeah. And, and the only, like the one thing, like with, with the latest fur trade record, which is nuts it's crazy i cannot wait to put it out um we've kind of been doing that for about six years now where yeah. it's it's just like we just keep beating it yeah. um and yeah. and now now it's like okay let's just put it out you know what i mean like it's it's <laughs> we might be able to make it better but yeah. it's going to be like 0.1 percent better mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, let's just... Yeah, that's a tough thing, too, knowing when to... Because it can be dangerous. When it's to finish, yeah. When when to just go, okay, we're putting it out. No more brush strokes on this. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> done. Painting is done. Yeah. Frame it, put it out. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, because exactly a week, a month later, you you for sure will go back and you'll be better. Could make it better. It'll never end. So That's the problem. <laughs> and it's crazy. Like, I find with, like... I kind of often will hate something that I put out at first, just usually because I'm like, I've list, I've, I've lived in it for so long that I'm just like so sick of it. Yeah. And then I'm, I'm, I'll be like, like, it's never going to be good enough. Like, you know, whatever, all the weird, like mm -hmm. s psychosis of, of me as an artist. Yep. Um, but like, Man, I listen back to things, and once I've got a little bit of distance, and it's been two or three years, I'm just like, this was so like it's so much better than I thought it was. Like yes. this is it's really good. It was like, really good. And yeah. and and with space, like <laughs> with space and time, it's crazy what the brain does. Like, I don't know if it's a social thing, like a cultural thing. I don't know what it is, but it's like we do tend to revere older things. Mm. Um, and it's like once something's just kind of existed for 20 or 30 years you kind of just accept it as it is mm. instead of taking it apart at least i do and and i th i think that this is kind of just like a collective like subconscious thing we listen to older music and we just most people kind of just accept it as this thing this like this permanent concrete thing that that exists as that you know sure um yeah. And I'm definitely that way with my own music. I much prefer some space. Like yeah, give me give me 5 years and I'm like, 
Yeah, that shit was hot. I mean, that's a long time. I've never gone back five years, but I, like... Well, not to remix it, just to, just like, to, hear to it. enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, Some, yeah. yeah. And we're, so you're talking about something that was finished mm-hmm. then. And, and out and released. And out. Okay, And yeah. even like on the radio. Yeah. And at the time, I'd sometimes hear, hear some of my own stuff on the radio and cringe because I'm just <laughs> like... I was just so weird about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I still get weird about my shit. Yeah, sure. Um, but then, you know, with some space, suddenly it's it's not my song anymore. It's this song that kind of existed and is this like, sure. it feels like it's something sure. else. And I'm like, hey, that was actually pretty good. Why am I such a dick to myself? You it's know? like, I don't have children, but I guess it's kind of like letting a kid out to school for the first time and being really worried about it, but then seeing that it actually did okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. You, know, you didn't, you know, you're still here. You're yeah, doing great. You didn't bring a gun to school. <laughs> yeah, you didn't bring a gun to school. <laughs> you made friends. You're getting better. You, you know, you've aged well, like, and, mm-hmm. and then they come home and it's like, wow, you know what? You did it. Um, that's cause that's, I know that's how a lot of artists feel about their music. It's their baby. It's their passion. It's like, they're yeah. so protective and particular about it and hypercritical and, so, and, and often wrong, mm-hmm. which I hate to say it. I have been wrong before. It is a thing. And I think, you know, it's funny, like the best producers, once they're kind of like that I've worked with, once they're at a certain echelon of like just they're good producers kind of thing being able to communicate with artists is is crazy Mm. not being like a babysitter but being able to like get real with an artist and be like yo (laughs) this is really good yeah trust me yeah you're not gonna regret this you need to stop like you need to stop you know what i mean like sending me five pages of notes for mixing um Cause yeah, it's, it's just so easy to, to really go down that rabbit hole when it's your voice Mm -hmm. and it's Mm -hmm. your thing and you're nervous and you're like, is it good enough? And it's, you know what I mean? Like that's a, that is a, a skill in itself that does, that's has nothing to do with music for sure. That makes a great producer is just being an expert, like under understanding and and communicator mm-hmm, mm-hmm. uh walking on eggshells with the artist but really being able to be firm and just really getting the point across um, yeah when it needs when, when it when, needs to happen when it needs to happen and yeah. and then also like yeah in in the writing room totally it's a social game too it's like it's funny i always kind of wanted to be a psychiatrist <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> and that's basically what I do with artists. It's particularly yep. particularly with female artists mm-hmm. where there's just they seem to be so much more just connected with themselves and their experiences and what's happening and what they're feeling and what they're going through and we just we'll just talk for like an hour before we write anything. For and sure, then it's man. like we know we know where we're going to go. Like yep. this is what just happened. Let's write a song about that. Um I'm personally the opposite when, when I'm the artist, cause I'm closed off mm. and like, I'm just, I'm so much more private, mm. um, which is why I've actually been getting back into just writing my stuff, just myself, Oh yeah, um, which has been really nice to kind of, I don't know. I got, I like LA gave me this beautiful toolbox from working with all these amazing producers uh-huh. and writing like a song a day. And now I can take that and like take my time with it and like figure, figure things out, you know? Yeah. I, I imagine you would have picked up some incredible skills there, mm-hmm. you know, being mm-hmm. around all those people and in that environment and the repetition of it. And yeah, it's, um, I still can't believe that I even did it. It's like yeah. the amount that I was writing was crazy. It was it was a bit excessive. Did it ever feel forced? Like, was it too much? Some days, yeah. yeah, yeah. But like, the thing is, it's a muscle. And like, a friend of mine, my friend Matt Turner, he's he's a brilliant um, novelist. And like, his new thing that he's doing is he just, he's just like, I just I write five hundred or five hundred more than five hundred five thousand words. Is that a lot of words? That's about like. Six or seven pages. Yeah, 
I haven't done an essay. I can't remember years. the exact well, I think number. 5, 000, yeah, five hundred words is not a lot of words. Five hundred words is like two paragraphs, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> he, he's like, he's like, I write five thousand words a day. <laughs> sometimes it's good. Yeah. Sometimes it's not. Mm. But every day I'm like kicking the ball up the mountain yeah. of this book that I'm working on. Yeah. And five thousand is a good thing for him because it's not so much that editing it is going to be like a nightmare mm. because he's got like. 10,000 pages of, you know what I mean? Sure. Um, and that's kind of, I guess that's how it felt. There, I, Some days we'd write a really good song. Some days we'd just finish a song, you know, but we always finished songs. Um, I think that's really important. And I, I think that's a crazy muscle that a young artist sh- or songwriter should be exercising. Is f- finishing. Finishing. Mm. Even if it's not, perfect yep finishing the song is everything because it it just kind of puts your brain it just trains your subconscious to expect that as the normal Mm. and then what used to take you a week to write you know you're 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 writing in a day and and obviously i'm not saying that it has to be finished like you're always going to tweak lyrics and the second verse maybe you know you'll beat it or whatever but like just the skeleton, the full, having it be this, this like blueprint of a house uh-huh. is, is key. Yeah. I think. Getting good at all of those steps, the start, the middle and the finish. Right. Yes. Yeah. Um, that's really good advice. Um, I'm really, I'm really curious about what these writing rooms are like. Cause you've mentioned that a couple of times. Can you explain to everyone like what that looks like? Well, it would be like, I mean, basically I would just. My team down there would set me up with writers and okay. there's so many amazing writers and producers in LA, obviously. Um, and so I just go to their house. They usually had a studio set up that kind of resembled um, this this vibe. Mm-hmm. And we'd get to know each other. We'd hang out for a bit and then, and then we'd write a song. And that was really it. I wasn't a fan... A lot of people in LA do, there'll be like four different people in the room, like a top liner, producer, a lyric guy. What's a top liner? Top liner is like a vocal melody person. Oh, okay. I worked with some amazing top liners who are like, there's like this one gal, she was like pregnant and so sweet and funny and like just was eating this giant, like... (laughs) It's like a like a roast chicken basically <laughs> on a couch, and I was like, okay, all right. Um, and this is like you know someone who's like worked with Sia, worked with like like so many amazing people. Yeah. And she was just sitting there eating, and I was like coming up with things, and and then she spoke, oh, uh, oh, what do you think about? And like with like a drumstick in the air, like. Uh, like you know what i mean just like just shaping melodies and it's like oh damn okay cool that's sick just shit like that like so sometimes you know it's as simple as that and i'm working with a producer who's just building the track up as i'm like furiously writing lyrics um Yeah. yeah it's it was i mean it's different every time but it's usually pretty chill pretty relaxed and like it's really fun mm um, I do prefer one-on-one though. Yeah. Like just a producer and me. Um, just cause it, you, it, you run the risk if there's one bad apple or there's just one person who's not quite vibing with you, it just ruins the session. Yeah, and then it's yeah, not fun. Sure. And when it's not fun, it just feels like work. And then you, you, you don't do, you don't do good work. Yeah. You don't put your best you know stop if if you've got if you're wearing if you've got your like your shield up mm. then it's not gonna get you good art a hundred percent oh my god yeah it's all about the vibe that word gets overused but my god like it's a good word for it though (laughs) it's it's overused because it's 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 pretty it sums it up well it's the intangible thing of yeah of like us channeling this art that comes through us you know totally music melodies whatever it is all this stuff that we put into microphones you know it's the vibe Mm -hmm. um when you're working with a producer you're there in the capacity of writing lyrics 
Well, at that time, at that time, I was writing uh, for my solo project with them. So、oh, okay. I would usually, I'd usually come in with an idea. Yeah.、Um, play it on guitar. This is kind of the chord progressions. We'd block it out. We'd build a beat,、um, and then we'd just kind of start throwing ideas back and forth.、Mm, okay.、Um, generally, a lot of the producers there weren't contributing lyrics,、um, but some of them were. You know, it it all depends on on who you're working with. Yeah.、Um, but yeah, that's that's all I got. Okay. You、yeah. you can you can. You can prompt me, because in the writing room, like my brain is so conditioned to think, like I work hip hop and R and B and trap, like that's what I do, right? So、yeah. it's like the all the music's already there. So when I'm picturing writing room, I'm、oh. I'm, I'm thinking like, oh, I'm forgetting that like writing means like writing a guitar we're part, building the beat, we're, we're writing we're, a baseline, we're, we're, you know? yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So there's all that stuff, right? Which is super fun, and and that's that's really cool, and that's that's something that I'm really enjoying with getting into hip hop now and approaching it as something that's less sample based and. Almost, you know, make making beats from scratch.、Mm -hmm. um, it's just really fun because it still loops. Yeah. So like, it's less. It's not less work. Less work is the wrong way to put it. But there's like, there's less moving pieces because it's like the chorus is the verse. Once, once, for, at least the way that I've been doing it, it's like once I have something sick, I just loop it, loop it, loop it. And then when I know the hook is going to come in, I'll, you know, add some things to lift it. Yes. But yes. but it's like it's it's not like, you know, we're not modulating keys, and it's maybe maybe in the bridge I'm introducing a new part. Yeah. But like, once I have an idea, cool, like four bar loop, I'm kind of. My work's done, <laughs> right? Which is really nice. Yeah, there's、um, no tempo changes, no key changes. Like I mean, said, there could be, there but, could be, but there, there doesn't for, have to be. For the majority, like you said, that loop is pretty much it, and then you can sprinkle in like a nice little string yeah, line in the hook to lift it, or give it a big fat or, sub or,、yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's、mm -hmm. a different, it's a totally a different, uh, you know, approach. I, I imagine to.、Uh, To like rock or rock,、pop. where it's、yeah. every single component is pretty much played by a human being,、mm -hmm. and all、mm -hmm. of it has to piece together. And so you do need to have these、um, these big sessions, these writing sessions, you know. Yeah, yeah. It was fun. It was it was definitely cool. I learned a lot,、um, and it's just it's it's always great to see other people work. Yeah.、Know? Oh God, you learn a lot from、yeah. from other people, and then especially like. You know, people that are that have been doing something a lot longer than you, surrounding yourself by people that are like, you know, black belts. I like to call them. You know, sure. You 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 can pick their brain, or you can or, watch them work, and it's like wow. Like, or just hearing them talk about、yeah. like the house that they just bought. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like,、yeah. oh, I should be hanging out with these cats. This、yeah. is my circle. Totally.、Right、yeah. Yeah. Um. So, how many like besides? Beach tits, you're doing solo solo、stuff. Parker Bosley stuff, fur trade, fur trade. Those are my main projects. Yeah, Steve and I are also we've we're starting a new project, but I actually won't talk about that yet. But we're we're we've got something kind of cool going on.、Um, and then yeah, I do like I do a lot of session bass work.、Mm. I just.、Um, I just did an album with a cat named Mike Adell, which is really cool.、I、played bass on all that and co-wrote some songs with him. Nice, cool song coming out with Blonde Diamond that I co-wrote on.、Um, I just write write with a lot of artists.、Um, I'm not really producing other people's stuff yet because I don't know. I've got a production credit on. The new Blonde Diamond song, which I'm excited about. Very、It's、nice. It's my first official production. Oh,、credit. well done. Yeah. Yeah.、Uh, getting there. Work. Working towards it. And then、um, just composing for like film and TV and doing like ads and stuff like that. Yeah, man. Get get your fingers on a lot of different 
baskets? What's the expression? I mean, we have to, you know. Yeah, pots. Uh, pots. Boiling pots. Put your hands in boiling Put your water. Hands in a lot of water. That's my advice to young musicians. I mean, yeah. Cook I mean, your hands. Fuck. Until I'm <laughs> until I'm charging like two grand a mix, I'm gonna be doing lots of little things, uh, you know. Yeah. And it's great because I love doing it. It's it's I, I have you know like you. You've got the you've got such a diverse skill set. It's great. Put your hands mm-hmm. into a lot of different things. Be useful. It's, be it's, creative. It's the easiest way to network too because you're 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 networking with people you're meeting people they're talking about you you're talking about them it's free advertising yeah and that's just the way that the world works it's we live in a very it's like a very nepotistic industry and it doesn't need to be family it's friends too Mm -hmm. and it's like you just gotta kind of get out there and meet people and i'm not that good at doing that anymore um so work is how I tend to connect with people. I got to book a writing session with them. And then we do a hang, you know? Mm. Um, my days of meeting people at the club, just, I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's not such a golden carrot these days to me. Yeah, I haven't done Doing that Doing Jaeger long shots. Time. I just can't be part of that scene anymore. <laughs> I can't go on Granville Street period anymore. Like I just I get I get punched every time I go to Granville Street. <laughs> We've both been punched on Granville Street. That's funny. Um Yeah. Well I mean fuck like social media is so incredibly powerful. I know you're online and I am and like I could be better at that. I could definitely be better at it, but considering you, you how little effort I put into it, I get a lot of gigs just through like people DMing me on Instagram right. asking what my mixing rates are. Slipping in your it's DMs. Crazy. Nice. Yeah. That's cool. They, like you you are you post shit like once a day. I try to be consistent. Yeah. And I try and put out like content like that's valuable to people that are in my world. Like, and it's relevant to what you're doing. And it's relevant to what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. I think those are like, those are things that I learned uh, when I was in Nimbus and I was in the music business program, we had a social media guru right. come over and do like a workshop, right. And teach us like the 10 golden rules of social media. N- not all of it stuck with me, but I did take some of it to heart. And I think I've gotten better over the years. I've like picked up some good habits. There's know? a way to do it. The, the best advice I ever got, which is now kind of where I'm at moving forward, was Tyler Bancroft from Said the Whale told me, if you're doing your social media and it, and it feels true to you, then it's, then it's easy. Yeah. It's never going to be difficult. Oh, yeah. He was like, don't listen to other people. Don't listen to what your PR people are telling you you should be doing or whatever. Just do whatever feels like true to you and that you, that you f- actually look forward to posting about. Right. And and you're fine. Obviously, you know, within your realm of, of musicality and mm-hmm. stuff. But like, don't flex if, if you're not someone who naturally flexes. And like, don't, yes. you know, don't be cooler than you are. <laughs> just like, just be you. And, and right? it resonates with people as well. And, and you so won't true. hate it. So because true. I've, I've, I've loved and I've hated social media. Um, and now I'm like, okay, if I'm going to do it, I have to just enjoy it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. People can see right through the bullshit. Like if it's genuine or not, like they really can, you know, you're scrolling through, scrolling through and you see something that's just, it looks fake. It's like cringy. It's just like, oh my God, no. Like, yeah, you know see less posts like this exactly <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or if it's like something dope and original and inspiring and it came from someone's heart and they're just like this is something i did today that made me happy here's yeah you yeah enjoy it too and it's it like, doesn't have to be this heavy big thing it's like it's just it just it, it's it's like oh, okay well this doesn't piss me off yeah yeah triggered <laughs> yeah Should, yeah yeah so um God bless the internet if you're using it right. I mean, it, it, it it's it's great. I, I, I go on and on about it every single podcast about how great Instagram has been. So Done that. Yeah, it's good, man. Um, so where can people like find Parker Bosley's music? Sure. Um, and what well, are you proud of and what do you want people to you can, like, go and check out? You can check out all my solo stuff on any major streaming platform. 
It's just Parker Bosley. That's two S's, not like the pet food chain, <laughs> which I I wish I was inheriting that, but I'm not. Um, you can check out my old uh, older rock band Gay Nineties on all the streaming platforms. My kind of more experimental neo yacht rock project Fur Trade. And yeah, those are that's kind of my main project. Um, and then there's a bunch of other stuff. If you just kind of Google my name, if you did want to do a deep dive, you could find all of my co-writes and stuff. But uh, I get the feeling you probably won't. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of good stuff out there. There man. is I'm, a lot of good stuff. We'll out make there. sure that um, we got links to all that so people can go and like just. Oh, sick! You're gonna you're on... gonna link it. Okay, oh, 100 percent. Okay, then yeah. then just 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 follow the links. Yeah. Ignore what I just said. It's yeah. It's all very exciting. It'll be out there if you, you know, Parker Bosley with two S's. Um, and yeah, I mean, uh, people can do a whole weekend uh, binge on, on, on your catalog. It's there's, immense, there's, you know, all the stuff, stuff you've done. Yeah. 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 Um, cool, man. Anything else you want to chat about before we wrap this up? I mean... The only thing that we could really do is we could like hit pause and we could listen to that Donald Fagan song and then we could talk <laughs> we about could it for like it five the, minutes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, let's just wrap it up then. Um, we're going to, we're going to have you back one day and, and, and retell these stories and hear about all the progress and stuff. So, Love um, it. And I need to get that door open. I think it's getting kind of... It's getting hot in her. Getting hot in her. Yeah. Um, Well, thanks for having me. Dude, thank you so much. This has been a huge blast for me. And hopefully everybody learned a lot. And, you know, I can't wait to, you know, share all the stuff you've been doing so people can can check it out. And, um, yeah, thank you guys so much for listening. It's Thanks for listening. And Parker Bosley. And this is Demo to Limo. Take care. You.